Wedge soles. What are they? Why am I talking about them? <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about wedge soles. I'm going to be comparing wedge soles from brand to brand, going over a little bit of what I know about the history and a little bit about the function and mostly about my personal evolution with wedge soles. Full disclosure, I used to really hate wedge soles. I did not like them at all. I used to think that they were very much getting too much into sneaker territory. I really like the look of a service boot. The traditional service boot is probably something like this Viberg service boot is pretty much like my ideal version of what a man, piece of man's footwear should be and look like. This has got a uh, day night sole with a traditional heel, which is just a separate piece. It gives a little bit of arch support. Now that said, I've looked at, at this point, hundreds of thousands of boots, different models, different styles, different leathers. Over time, I started to kind of like the idea of a wedge sole and, I'll, and the reason why is because of how damn light it is. It's so light in comparison to other boots. Most of the weight in this boot is in the sole. It's got thick veg tan midsoles and insoles. It's got a steel shank in here. This rubber I think is, is heavier than the wedge rubber. There's a lot more weight. Most of the weight in a boot is gonna be in the sole. So if you take that heavy sole and replace it with a, say a wedge sole, which is extremely lightweight, then you dramatically lighten the feel of the boot. What does that mean, realistically? What that means is you could walk way further in these with way less fatigue. And I recently took a trip to Maui and I was using all wedge sole boots the entire time because I was doing a lot of hiking. And when you're in the hot, when you're in the heat and you're hiking far distances, you need that light weight you need that relief from the weight. Most days, if you're just going about your business, going to work, running errands, then a heavy boot, you're not gonna notice it. But when you're trekking five, 10 miles, 15 miles in a day, yeah, you're gonna notice it. And that's why a wedge sole is so advantageous to have. Long story short, I used to hate wedge soles because of how they looked like a sneaker. Then I started to evolve into liking the idea, warming up to the idea because of the lightweight feel that they have. But then, you know what, I finally succumbed and I said, you know what, I think it actually does kind of look cool. <laughs> like if you look at these, they kind of look like spaceman boots, like astronaut boots, you know what I mean? Like they're cool in their own way and uh, they definitely work with my wardrobe, no doubt about it. They work in any man's wardrobe, in fact. I used to think that it was more of like a teenager type look. Do I think it's the most professional, like would I wear a wedge sole with a suit? Absolutely not. But in 98% of other situations, you can totally pass with a wedge sole. Nobody's gonna look at you funny. Real quick overview. So what the hell is a wedge sole? Anyways, a wedge sole is often accompanied by a mock toe design and it runs the entire length of the outsole. That means that from heel to toe, you have one solid piece of rubber or other material that allows a larger contact surface with the ground. Compared to a lug sole, there is no gap between the heel and the toe, providing more support under your foot's arch and an overall more comfortable experience. The pros are, they're more comfortable. Now, that is subjective, but I will say they are comfortable. I'm not gonna say they're more comfortable than leather soles, but they are comfortable. <laughs> It says here on everboots.com, they're more comfortable, especially, especially on flat, hard surfaces. The increased surface area of the soles allow them to more evenly distribute impact when walking. This makes your experience much more comfortable on a daily basis and can help reduce stress on your back and knees in the long run. They're lighter weight, similar to the previous point, the lighter weight is more comfortable, allowing you to be on your feet more without as much fatigue. They track less dirt because the treads on the bottom of the soles are not as deep. They don't collect dirt or debris as much, making them and your living spaces a little easier to maintain. The cons are less traction on uneven surfaces. The main trade-off here is that a solid, solid wedge sole has less traction, especially when you're not on a hard, flat surface. Wedge soles can wear out more quickly, and depending on how they were originally manufactured, you may not even have the ability to re-sole them. 
A wedge sole is good for framing, construction, or any job that has you working on hard surfaces. A wedge sole boot can be worn on a daily basis. Okay, so a few things. Yes, they don't track as much dirt as a lug sole, but if you're really worried about not tracking dirt, then you could go for a smooth neocork sole as is seen on these Thoroughgood roofer boots. Completely smooth. No mud is gonna get stuck on that because it's smooth. Or you could opt for the, the neocork sole on the Alden Indy also is not going to track any dirt whatsoever. A wedge sole, on the other hand, does have grooves, can get dirt. I get dirt stuck in there sometimes, not a lot, but some can get it in, in there, you know, see there's grooves. But like they said, the advantage here is that it's all one piece. That makes resoling these actually, probably in most cases, pretty easy because you're not putting a heel on with leather heel stacks. It's just one piece and then you have your midsole there. Real quick, before I continue, let me just go over all the boots that you see before you. This is far from being comprehensive. So many companies make wedge soles and not every company has their own proprietary wedge sole. So they most of the time use Vibram or cheaper alternatives. Let's start with these. These are my J. Crew Kentons, but these are very similar to the Dirty Buck that Grant Stone sells. It's a tan suede for the upper and then we've got an EVA foam outsole, which is a wedge sole. And uh, I think this is a J. Crew specific wedge sole. It's got these sort of line grooves through it. Check out Grant Stone. The Dirty Buck is a super duper versatile shoe. I've been meaning to do a video on the Dirty Buck for a long time. Wyatt Gilmore talks about the Dirty Buck. It's an absolute classic. It's great on the golf course. It's great for summer wearing. You could wear these sockless. You could wear these with shorts. You can wear these with socks and denim. You can wear them with practically anything. In fact, I have worn these with suits. A super duper underrated shoe right here. I can't stress that enough, but yeah. So these have like a salmon colored, I believe a J. Crew proprietary wedge sole as the outsole. Next we have Mark Alberts. Most of my wedge soles are these. These are the Vibram Morflex Christie wedge soles. Most, I think like Red Wing, Nyx, White's, most boot makers, when they opt for a wedge sole, this is the one they use. You're gonna see this most of the time. So these Mark Alberts are in Forest Kudu. Kudu is an antelope leather, a super cool exotic leather. Love these, love these boots. Next up, we've got my Grantstone Field Boots in Walnut Bison on the, this is a proprietary Grantstone wedge sole. And as you can see, it's got a Grantstone veg tan leather piece in here. And then the wedge here looks like waves and the waves extend you have like a good inch in the front and the back and then the rest is all waves and as you can see it's a different pattern compared to the vibram morflex christie wedge sole here they're all going to have different patterns right the vibram morflex christie has like sort of zigzags going on on the bottom the grant stone looks more like ocean waves next up we have these Truman boots in Naranja Horse Rump. Still haven't worn these. This is a really special pair of boots. I am in love with these so much that I haven't worn them yet. These are on probably my favorite wedge sole, the Vibram Gloxy Cut. The reason why I love this wedge sole so damn much is because it's have, in, in leather working, we call these relief cuts. In this case, they just call it the Gloxy Cut. Uh, sometimes leather workers do this with leather. If there's a piece of leather that needs to bend, bend a lot more than the leather wants to bend, you know, because sometimes leathers like cardboard or wood doesn't want to bend very far. What you can do in that case is create what's called what are called relief cuts through there, and then that really allows it to bend and flex way better because you're just etching out large portions of the outer surface and digging in grooves so that it flexes easier. So in this case, in this Vibram Gloxy cut, my Truman boots in Indian tan mohawk are also on a Gloxy cut sole and they flex so damn well. Your foot does not have to fight to flex those boots. Not to say that your foot will have to fight to flex in any of these, but they flex far better in the Gloxy cut for sure. And there you go, Vibram, another example of two different Vibram wedge soles right there. So these are my Teal Rambler Truman boots. Just an un 
unbelievable pair of boots. Uh, the color just pops so beautifully. This is called the Vibram Sahara Wedge. Far different from either of the previous two. The Vibram Sahara Wedge has its own uh, vertical grooves all throughout and it's shaped a little different. This one has much more of a foam feel about it compared to the wedge on the Gloxy Cut. The Gloxy Cut feels a little bit more rubbery. All these are gonna have just different, they're gonna be blends of different synthetic compounds, but the Vibram Wedge, it's got more of a foam feel to it compared to some of the other ones. It's similar to this, to this EVA foam outsole. One con to this sole, now I do think it looks very attractive, especially because it's not white, it's like a more of a cream color. And I think it definitely looks super gorgeous against the teal Rambler in these trimmings. But yeah, I really like the cream sort of colorways between, between the Veg Tan insole, and then the white midsole, I'm not sure what that is, and then the Sahara Wedge outsole. Well, one con to the Sahara Wedge that uh, I noticed is when I was hiking on Haleakala in Maui, the Vibram Sahara Wedge on my Coach Rambler Truman Upland Mock Toes got sort of chewed up a little bit, which is really cool. Volcanic la lava rock will tear through these, but it, in the Sahara Wedge Soul's defense, it'll probably tear through any of these. <laughs> Next up are my Truman Boots in Oyster Shell Rambler on the 79 last, and these are on a black Vibram Morflex outsole. So the same exact outsole as the Mark Alberts, just in a different color. <laughs> Comes in many colors. Next, we have my Grant Stone Diesel Boots in tan suede. These are on a Vibram Cavity Wedge outsole. These are both Vibrams, but the Cavity Wedge that Grant Stone used, it's definitely more of the same compound as is used in the Christy and in the Christy wedge sole. So same, same, definitely same type of rubber, but it's similar in appearance to the Sahara wedge. The difference though, is that the Sahara wedge in the heel and throughout the rest of the outsole is thicker compared to what Grant Stone opted for. This is more of a medium weight wedge. So it's gonna be a lot more sleeker, a lot closer to the ground, a lot more grounded. Whereas the Sahara wedge, has a little bit more spring to it as well as if you can see this one actually has a little bit of a little bit of concave curvature in the arch whereas that arch is far less pronounced on the, the Sahara wedge there so fascinating next up we've got these Wilcox boots which are for sale on my website dalesleatherworks.com these were sent to me by my buddy Joe to sell for him these are on an extra light wedge sole that I've never heard of. Like I said in the beginning, there's gonna be a lot of wedge soles. Most all of them that you're gonna see are gonna be from Vibram. In this case, this is probably going to be a competitor, probably a more affordable competitor. These Wilcox boot, boots are made in Mexico. It would be no surprise that they're probably using a wedge sole that's just a little bit more affordable, but 98% of the way a Vibram. I could tell by feeling it, it's still really good quality. It's got cool grooves on the bottom. You're not, you're not missing out on anything by not having Vibram. The Vibram probably just has a little bit more tread resistance, you know, in a, in a stress test. But overall, I mean, they're all gonna do well. This is a nice boot, by the way. It's got a, it's got a really tall split reverse welt all around the perimeter. It's built on a, so it's a plain toe boot. The joint welt is a little wonky here, but it's 360 degree Goodyear welted, 100% veg tan insole, midsole. Overall, I think these boots are around $200. Killer deal for these. That's, that's a hell of a boot for 200 bucks. Yeah, Wilcox Cloud Kush. Nice. The insole is, looks like a synthetic, a synthetic insole, which, isn't the best, but still. I mean, yeah, these are in a size 10. This is the Kern style, I'm made in Leon, Mexico. So anyways, if you're interested in these, they're on sale on my website. Very nice boot for the price. Next up, the Wolf and Beard boots made in Ukraine by my buddy Artem Volk. I posted a full review of these boots on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out if you're interested. These, This is the, called the Samurai Mock Toe. In my opinion, the wedge sole best compliments a mock toe style like this. As you can see, I don't have many mocks 
on this table mostly for the sake of variety, aside from these field boots, Grant Stone field boots, and these DVA Nomad boots in olive suede. That right there, that's like sort of the quintessential mock right there is on a wedge sole. And so yeah, so go check out Artem's brand, Wolf and Beard. The man is an absolute beast and he's cranking out some absolutely amazing mock toes. Last, but certainly not least, these are going to be my DVA boots in olive suede. These are also built in Mexico. These are on what's called a Hufflex oil resistant wedge sole. It's important to note the shape of them, you know, because in this case, they're very much, they're flat, but they do have a little bit of a curve upward. That's gonna be more due to the ad adhering it to the midsole here though. It's not because the sole is actually shaped like that but where the shape does become different is in the obvious cases where you see this inner concave curvature here that is built into the sole. Most of what you're seeing in the shape is, as it's adhered to the midsole, it will have been glued to the midsole. That's the other downfall is uh, these wedge soles will have all been bond welted. None of them are stitched. The adhesives are extremely strong, so don't take that as a knock necessarily. So yeah, so these Hufflex, also very cool. They, they have like a futuristic, like a, ro uh, I don't know why, but I, I, the design of it conjures up images of like, memories of like old video games like Nintendo and Atari and, and things like that. Like simpler times that were leaning towards futuristic times, I guess. This is also going to be a very nice foam, a very hard wearing wedge outsole. Also an extremely light boot. I will leave links to the DVAs and all that in the description below. So this is according to Nick's boots. You might have noticed both lug and wedge sole work boots. Both are classic work boot designs made for practical purposes and plenty of people prefer one to the other for a host of reasons. Wedge sole work boots launched a number of work boot brands such as Thoroughgood with widespread adoption in certain industries or regions. Is there something to them? Why bother with a wedge sole? Boot soles are really just a tool for a particular task. They perform a function in a particular manner, and if that happens to be suited to what it is you're doing, it makes doing whatever that is that much easier for you. Wedge sole work boots are a great choice for certain professions, but not for others. If you're wondering why they've, they're have they even a thing, or if you should get a pair of wedge sole work boots, such as the Wedge Worker by Nick's Handmade Boots, here are three reasons you might. Wedge sole work boots are more flexible. The design aspect of the wedge sole is that the wedge itself is one solid piece. It runs the entire length of the outsole from the front to back. Lug soles are two-piece designs with a raised heel and then a second traction bed under the midfoot to the toes. The difference there is that the actual contact area in car tires, it's called the contact patch, is the entire length of the foot rather than the heel and the front of the foot. The effect is that the sole has a bit more flex to it, a bit more give. Some people prefer their footwear to have a bit more flexibility, which can be observed in the barefoot shoe trend of the last four years. Some people found that they preferred the footwear that flexed with the foot, leading to a more natural feeling footfall. Some people find boots with lug soles feel heavy, causing the heel to drag and otherwise feeling a bit awkward. The wedge sole is flexible, it is by far not the most flexible sole in my opinion. The most flexible sole is gonna be a 100% vegetable tanned leather outsole. That by far is what takes on the best flex and retains the, the best, most highest quality flex over time. We're dealing with rubber here and foams and the wedge soles, they flex wonderfully, beautifully, but you get a much more satisfying flex in a leather sole. I will always talk up the leather sole above anything else. For example, these Grant stones, there's not much of a sole under here, but my God, the support that this little bit of leather can give you and the flex and the moisture wicking properties and all that is unmatched. No synthetic compound, in my opinion, can compete with veg tan leather outsoles. And speaking of veg tan leather outsoles, on my website, dalesleatherworks.com, I sell 100% natural veg tanned 
insoles for you if you have a boot let's say that is a little generous fitting i sell thin medium weight which this is medium and and thick insoles these thick insoles are no joke these could save you from a relast i would only say i would only recommend you buy these thick ones if you're considering a relast in your boots because they are like cardboard they are difficult to break in you have to commit to these things but they could save you from a relast if your boot is too big by a full like size and a half or two full sizes i would say this could quite possibly make them work uh, they are just as moisture moisture wicking as the veg tan insoles and midsoles in all these boots it's the same stuff in fact this is herman oak this particular one the thick one is herman oak veg tan the herman oak this is 15 ounces it's incredibly thick stuff the medium weight stuff is uh veg tan if you're off by like a half size maybe a full size that's what i'd recommend in most cases the thin is if you just need a small bump the thin isn't going to do much if you need to like eat up like a quarter of a size worth of volume within the sole then that's what you'd want so this insole started out looking like this flat right started out flat but i wore these these are mine and uh i wore these for probably three four days and look how they conformed to the shape of my foot naturally i didn't do anything to alter the shape it started out flat like this stick it in the in the boot as long as it fits like well securely inside the boot as in it's not shifting around the edges of it aren't riding up in any certain point which that does make it difficult to fit because these only come with you know in one shape basically sometimes it's hard to get it get it to fit perfectly depending on the last but you can see what takes place it will take the form of your arch it will take the form of your forefoot that take the form of your toes, all of it. It just perfectly becomes an ergonomic piece and it's moisture wicking. If it doesn't get gross over time, it can save your boots from needing to be sold or relasted or what have you. So once again, dalesleatherworks.com if you're interested. So Nix also says, some people find wedge soles more comfortable on concrete. Yeah, I could definitely see that. If I had to choose between a lug commando outsole on concrete, versus a wedge sole, I'd take the wedge sole hands down. I definitely agree with them on that point. Lastly, they say if you don't need the utmost utmost in traction, a wedge sole is awesome. I'll actually disagree with them there. I did a lot of hiking in my wedge soles and they provide phenomenal traction. The only area where they didn't have as good of traction, I would say is on mud, like slipper, slippery mud surfaces. Yeah, you will slip in mud, uh, but that's because it's wet. So I would say as long as it's not raining outside, even if it's raining, like the wedge sole is still gonna give you some good grip. If it's raining outside and you're walking on dirt and you're walking on mud, then yeah, use the lug commando outsole. But I still think the wedge sole might be just about as good as that. I hiked the Sleeping Giant on Kauai in my Truman Oxblood double shot upland boots and uh, I didn't slip a single time. I read so many reviews that said, oh, it was muddy, we kept slipping. I didn't slip, could be a balance thing. Like there, there was one instance where I was coming down a muddy hill and there were people, of course, watching me. They were, of course, watching me to watch me fall. And I surfed down that thing perfectly. I didn't fall at all. I knew they were watching me, I'm like, whatever. I don't know these people, I don't care. I'm gonna keep my balance, damn it, and I did. I just surfed down that surface beautifully, landed just like I was snowboarding down it, and uh, the wedge soles performed phenomenally. Same advice that I give with leather soles, like a lot of guys slip on their leather soles when they're going down slick steps or whatnot. Nothing is gonna slip unless you're negligent. You have to be mindful of what's on your foot, the grip of your foot to the ground, how much purchase you have on that surface. You have to be holding your balance. Don't just think that you can just take steps and and not suffer any consequences depending on what surface you're walking on. I've slipped in lug commando soles on ice and I've not slipped in leather soles going up super wet slick steps. It all just depends on how mindful you're being and how much control you have over your walk at the time that's what it really comes down to so yeah but thank you nix for for your input it's good input it's definitely a subject worth worth discussing i would say 
one really interesting thing that I saw on Reddit was one guy says, uh, when I was a structural iron worker, I wore Red Wing Irish setter boots. The wedge sole gave me total contact with the beams and girders that I had to walk on, and the absence of a heel meant that I couldn't catch on the edge of the steel. Catching a boot heel on the edge of a beam could precipitate a deadly fall. Lots of the tradesmen wore them or similarly constructed boots. There you go. That is a huge advantage to the wedge sole. You're not necessarily going to get it caught and trip on any protruding like impediments. If you're on a work site or something like that, it's much easier to keep your balance and to not slip if you're on a flat surfaced wedge sole. I think if you're like a roofer or if you're working on a construction site, a wedge sole will make your day a lot easier. I know that when I'm doing yard work outside, I prefer my wedge soles. You know, I, I like all soles, but I do prefer the wedge soles, especially when it's hot because I'm not lugging around as much weight. It's, it's as simple as that. Of all these, my favorite is definitely gonna be that Vibram Gloxy Cut. Once again, I think it looks cool and it flexes so damn well. Uh, links to all the relevant stuff will be in the description below, including for this amazing Hiroshi Kato denim jacket that I can't seem to separate myself from. Actually, I think it's uh, become part of my body because uh, I just don't like taking it off. I feel so damn cool when I'm wearing it. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. What are your opinions on wedge soles? I hope you learned something today. I definitely learned a few things by getting all these in front of me and just sort of comparing and contrasting. This is by far from comprehensive, by the way. There are many, many wedge soles out there that I did not discuss. If I was going to compare every wedge sole in existence, we'd be here for years. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let's keep the love of wedge soles alive. I will see y'all in my next video.